Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible, Bible Talk. Talk. And on behalf of all of the folks involved in Bible Talk, and Alice mm -hmm. and myself, mm -hmm. we want to greet you in the precious, the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we go into God's Word. Because it's His Word that He uses as the tool, that Word sharper than two -edged, any two-edged sword, that the potter uses to trim away from us the things that are not like Jesus Christ. Amen. Because his great promise is that whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed into the image of his son Christ. And that means cutting out everything that's not like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we're continuing on. Last week we were talking about, um, we were talking about the horror. Uh, I don't know, yes, I don't know yes, a better yes, word exactly. to say of people coming to Jesus Christ and saying, Lord, look what I did. Look what I did. Look what I, And he says, depart from me, you evil ones. I never knew you. And we were talking about the fact that that's because the word says salvation is the free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Pray that you will never go before Jesus Christ and point to your works because you've done nothing that he hasn't done through you. There's nothing we can do. All the glory belongs to him. Otherwise, that pride in your life mm will separate you from him. Yes. So we're going to continue on. We're in the, we're in the Sermon on the Mount. And by the way, I, I've said this, you know, to be in search of Christianity, we're looking for the real deal. We're looking for the real relationship with God the Father that only comes through the atoning work of Jesus, that is only powered by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Everything from Genesis, from Genesis 1 to Malachi, to the end of Malachi, that before the New Testament, Everything there points to Jesus. Everything there reveals Jesus. Everything points to this teaching that's coming. Mm -hmm. For the law was a tutor to lead us to Christ. And the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the law and the prophets were all there to bring us to the, this place with Jesus Christ. Everything after the Sermon on the Mount is nothing but commentary on the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. I mean, that may sound silly, but you think about it. Because this is the foundational teaching of Jesus Christ, right? It's Christianity. Yes. So we're going to start again, and we're going to look, and I think we, we may even conclude this part of our study. Mm. As we go in, and we're in Matthew 7, chapter 24, all right? Why do I say that? At chapter 7, verse 24 is where I'm going to start today. But before I do that, I'm going to ask Alice if you would ask God's blessing on our oh, time together. Father, we do. We come before you with humble hearts, Lord, knowing that there's nothing we can do or say that isn't from you. Because if we do, it's sin. We can't, we, as many mm -hmm. words, transgression is unavoidable. So, Father, we don't want anything to come out of our mouths that isn't from you. Amen. And, Lord, I ask that you touch Alan and let his heart be open to hear and speak what you, what you give him. And, Lord, that this word goes out and touches hearts and changes lives which we know it has the power to do. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, as I said, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to start, I'm going to read verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He starts out by saying, everyone who hears these words of mine. Mm -hmm. Now, in Matthew 13 where Jesus is telling these incredibly wonderful parables, one of which is the parable of the sower and seed. And he said, if you don't understand this, you'll not understand anything. Mm -hmm. The disciples said, why do you speak in parables? They don't, they're not understanding these things. And Jesus responded this way. I'm reading Matthew 13, starting at 14. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never proceed. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart 
and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. I pray your ears are open, right? Hallelujah. It's interesting. Alice and I have been doing so much traveling. We, you know, we pretty much live on the road, mm. and we've done a lot of traveling this year. And one of the things that I've said so many times this year is I, it seems like people just aren't hearing the word. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going into their ears, but they're not receiving the word. Well, that's the fulfillment of a prophecy from, from many, many years ago from the prophet Amos. In Amos 8, 11, it says, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. Now, it's interesting. It doesn't say it's going to be a famine because the words are not going forth. No. He says it's going to be a famine for, for hearing. hearing. Okay? We've done a study, and it may become a part of this study somewhere down the road, on the, seven, on the letters to the seven churches of Revelation in the, in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation. And interestingly, each letter yes. that Jesus sent through an angel, to mm -hmm. John on Patmos, to go to the church, every letter ends with the same, same statement from the Lord. Yes. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Later on in, in Revelation chapter 13, Verse 9 says, again, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. That phrase appears over and over throughout the scriptures. You see, there's hearing, and then there's, there's hearing. Selective hearing. You're, you're, well, because your mind can filter sounds out. Yes. That's the, that's the absolute truth. You know, I grew up in New York City. I grew up in Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan. And... If, you, if you're not experienced this, it's hard. it really is hard to understand that the noise is constant. constant. It's always there. Absolutely. The sound yeah. of taxi cab horns mm. blaring. Constant, constant, constant. Sirens going all through the day, all through the night. It's there. And you know what happens? Your brain filters them out. You don't, if you live there, you don't even hear them. No, that's true. You just, they just, it's like your brain has the ability you, you, the sound goes in, and your brain filters it out, and it doesn't reach your conscious mind. And it doesn't even have to be something as clamorous as a city street. In your own home, you have a clock that chimes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. We used to have a in when we had a home, we had a yeah. flat, we had a uh, what do you call it, a, like a grandfather clock, a yeah, small one, small, you know, small one, yeah. and it chimed. It chimed every half hour. It chimed every hour, and we had people visit with us, and people stay with us. And we'd wake up in the morning and we'd meet with them, have tea or coffee. And, and they'd say, oh, they slept horrible <laughs> because of the alarm kept them up all night long. Yeah, the chiming of the clock. Yeah. Of course, we, we never, never heard, heard it. it. Yeah. You because your brain... tuned it out. Okay. Don't ever become so accustomed to the word that you filter out yeah. the word of God. Right. This is a living word. Every word is the breath of God. All scripture, Paul wrote to Timothy, is God breathed. That's the breath of life. Right. You don't want to miss a word that God says. Right. And it's, it's, it's scriptures that you've heard over and over and over. You don't want to get those tuned out. Because each time God could speak something different to you in that verse. Because it's a living word. Because it's a living word. And, you know, you can grow in understanding. You can look at a scripture and you can understand that scripture. And you go there tomorrow. You can go there a week later or a year later. And God can give you greater understanding. understanding. That's right. All right? And you should be seeking that greater understanding because this is what, you know, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth Amen. of God. This is what causes you to grow as a, as a Christian. Yes. This is our food, our it's, spiritual it food. It is our spiritual food. It is our necessary food. Absolutely. Sweeter than honey from a rock. Yeah, more so than the body food. So Jesus talked about this and he said, and you, you act on him. You hear his words and you act on him. It says in Proverbs 14, 23, In all labor there is profit. Mere talk leads only to poverty. Yes. This is God saying long before that Nike shoe company ever existed. Mm -hmm. He's saying, do it. That's right. Don't just talk about it. Just do, do it. it. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it's great to hear. You've got to hear the word. But then you have to act upon it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, if you don't act upon it, what, what does it? Do is something. It won't do anything. 
Paul wrote this in, in Romans. Remember, I, I just got through saying, it's like everything else from here is commentary on it. Mm -hmm. All right? Romans 2.13, the Apostle Paul wrote, For it is not the hearers of the law who are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And then James, the Apostle, James says the same thing. James 1, 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You walk away and you forget. That's right. You have got to act upon the word. Amen. Otherwise you delude yourself. You're lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. We're looking for real Christianity. Real Christianity, listen to me, it is dependent on hearing the word. But real Christianity is about doing the word, living the word, bringing the word, right. being the word, surrounded. because you are the presence of Jesus Christ in this world. So it doesn't matter what you do. Whatever you do, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, whatever you do, this is, again, go back to Colossians. Colossians 2.23 says, whatever you do, do you work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men? When you are out in the world and you are doing things as unto the Lord, you're bringing the knowledge of his presence. And I promise you, it is the word of God that is that imperishable seed that can change people's lives. Amen. It doesn't matter how they respond. No. It doesn't matter how you perceive they respond. Mm -hmm. You have to trust the word of God and he watches over his word to perform it. It says in Isaiah 55 that God's word does not go forth without accomplishing his purpose. Amen. Yes, it may seem like people are rejecting. You know, the, I think the greatest example of somebody rejecting God's word mm -hmm. has to be when Stephen, That's right. remember he was selected by the church to uh, serve tables. Mm -hmm. He was selected by God to serve men, that, that everlasting food, That's the word of God. Yes. And when he was being stoned to death, and he, in imitation of, of Jesus, was blessing the people who were persecuting and killing him. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, don't hold this against them. He was proclaiming the love of God. And there was a young man there named Saul of Tarsus. And he was so in agreement with this execution yes. of Stephen for sharing the word. Mm -hmm. That he was holding people's coats so they could throw the rocks, stones harder. That's right. But you want to know something? What he was doing was hearing yes. the message of God's love. And that seed. And that seed, I promise you, bore fruit on the road to Damascus many years later. Yes. And it blossomed into something that changed the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word has to be the guiding light, the foundation on everything that you do, on every effort. Why? The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen. If you don't build on that, all right, a wise man, it says, built his house on the rock. Well, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. That's what it says in Psalm 127, verse 1. Mm. If, you're not, if, you're, if you're building on your own plans, leaning on your own understanding, doing the, your thing, and that's what the world is teaching you today, do your own thing. Yeah. No, no. Don't do your own thing. Doing your own thing is called, you might want to write this down. It's easy to write down. It's only three letters. Sin. Amen. Sin. So you've got to be doing the work of God, the work he's calling to you. Because everything you have, everything that you do must be done in faith or it is sin. Right. Did you hear that? Everything. Everything you do has to be founded on God's word. Otherwise, it's sin because it's not in faith. Mm -hmm. Listen, Paul wrote, I'm going back to the uh, letter to the Romans, Romans 14, 23. Paul said, he who doubts is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith. Whatever is not from faith is sin. And then in Hebrews, Hebrews eleven six, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Mm -hmm. Well, if everything, if you want to please God, everything you do has to be based on faith. You, everything you do is sin unless it is based on faith, done in faith. But where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Mm -hmm. Back to he who has an ear. 
Otherwise, you will be doing things. And as the prophet Isaiah said all those years ago, he said, our works are as filthy rags. The things that we do out of our own understanding, out of our own effort, not directed by the word of God, not directed by faith, is filthy rags. Which is why these people would come and boast before Jesus Christ and say, look what I did, look what I did. And he says, depart from me, I never knew you. It is very possible to be very religious yes. and very displeasing to God. You know, just thinking about how wonderfully and fearfully we are made and talking about hearing that God gave us two ears. I mean, that's important. That's hearing. He's gave us Amen. two of them. Seeing is very important. He gave us two of them. Smelling and speaking are don't seem to be as important as only one. I'll give you two nuts. <laughs> no. Well, no, because we need, to, we need to have that good confession in our lives. That's right. But the good confession is his word. That's right. You know, I've had people, and we were just discussing this before, I have people come to me and say, you know, what do you think about this? What do you care what I think? Mm -hmm. What I think has no power. My opinion has no power. The power is in the word of God. You need to hear the word of God. Absolutely. If you want God to build on that solid foundation in your life. And you want to know something? You could take all of the Word of God from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 22, but there is a central point to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that Jerusalem is the center of the earth. Hallelujah. But there's a center point to, to the whole Word. And that's what Paul found. This man who was as expert in the Word as you could find... And he said, I have determined to know nothing among you save Christ and him crucified. Because it is that event and that event alone that has made it possible for us to have any relationship with God the Father. Hallelujah. All right, Jesus went on and he was talking about, And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. When it was built on the rock, hallelujah, it stood. All right? I want to tell you something. There's a storm coming. Amen. There is a storm coming. Everywhere you look in the news. Now, I'm telling you that what's happening. Look on this date, all right? Russia's preparing for war. Yes. China's preparing for war. NATO is sending troops into, into up around Poland to stand against the border of Russia. Iraq... Are, is still at war after all these years. Iran is preparing for war. South Korea, North Korea is preparing for war. Things, things in the world, things in the natural are not good. No. You know, it was a long time ago that the Lord God looked down and said, looked at his creation and said it's good. good. It's not good right now. So you know what Paul says in Romans? All creation is groaning for the, the coming, coming of the Lord. Lord. Yeah. And God going to make it good once again. Hallelujah. You need to be prepared. And there's only one way to be prepared. That's to build your life. Build that house of your life on a rock. On, a, on, on that immovable rock. The problem is, so often, the church today is building the church today. Forgetting that the Lord said he would build his church. Matthew 16, 18. Also, forgetting what I quoted a moment ago, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. I, I've shared this with so many pastors in so many places. If you look at Solomon, Solomon who is gifted with wisdom greater than any, gifted with riches, and then later on in Ecclesiastes, in the second chapter, he says, why have I been given this wisdom? Mm -hmm. He forgot why God had given him the gift. You know why? Because it says, and go read that second chapter of Ecclesiastes and see what I'm talking about. Test what I say. Yes. He says, I built houses for myself. I planted vineyards for myself. I bought slaves for me. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it's not the kingdom of God that he's working on. It's not the kingdom of God that he's concerned about. He is building his own kingdom. Mm -hmm. It was a subtle change but it brought him to the place where it says he hated the work of his hands. Want to talk about pastoral burnout? Mm. I'll tell you what. Make sure that what you're building 
you have heard from God that you are doing what he has directed you to so that you're building, you're working with him to do that desire because then he will build his church or build that work in your life. Hurricanes, we just, we just had a, um, in, in the state of Florida, not long ago, I mean, just very, very recently, there was the anticipation of a major, major hurricane. Now, fortunately, it stayed pretty much off the coast, so it didn't do a lot of damage in the state of Florida. But you know what? Before the hurricane hit, there are preceding winds. Yes. yes. Okay? I mean, a hurricane doesn't just pow. It's not like a tornado. All of a sudden, it just shows up. There are preceding winds, so there's, there's warning for hurricanes, okay? There are warnings that are taking place in the world, as I said, okay? But if we are building our house upon that rock, and those winds come, and they will come, yes. we will be blessed to hear these words, words that build faith. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 44 verse 8 says this, Do not tremble, and do not be afraid. Have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? Mm -hmm. And you are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me, or is there any other rock? I know of none. There is only one rock. Amen. And that is the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. The work of the Lord will always be built on that rock. Yes. The Spirit of God will always point you towards that rock. Mm -hmm. The Word of God will always bring you to that rock. That rock that is higher than higher I. Higher than I. Hallelujah. Because you see, I can say, like the psalmist said, mm -hmm. I was down. I was in a, I was in a pit. I was in the miry clay, but he lifted me up, and he set my feet upon a rock, a rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, Alice and I, we, we lived down in the bush, in the jungle, mm. in Central America, miry years clay. ago. Out in that miry, and well, I'll tell you what, it was miry clay. They had an eight-month rainy season there, and the topsoil, topsoil, um, it's incredible. You could throw a seed down, and phew, something would pop up. But the topsoil was only that thick. That's right. And then it was clay, right? So actually, part of, part of the ministry that I was blessed to have was I, I used to go out logging on the Mosquito Coast with, with native guys because it gave me the opportunity to spend the day with them and be with them, share, share with them, and, yeah. and, and let them see the presence of Christ Jesus throughout okay. the, their daily work. That was a, a real blessing. But they were logging. They cut down trees which would then be driven into the ground so you could build on them mm -hmm. because the clay wouldn't support anything. Yeah. On one road, and there are only two main roads in the country, actually. On one road, there was, uh, just before we left, there was a big, like, almost like a warehouse that was being built. Mm -hmm. And it was really unusual because of the size of it and the construction of it. The only problem was that right Operation. after they built, it began to sink at one end. Yeah, it did. And it, it never got used. Because part of it just sank into the sand, yes. into the clay. It wasn't built on a rock, hallelujah, mm -hmm. okay? Today, I was talking about the church. Are we in the age of the, the church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation? Mm -hmm. Or are we in the church of Laodicea, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. That's a reasonable question that you have to ask yourself. And remember, the church of Laodicea thought that was grand. They said, we're rich, we have need of nothing. And Jesus said, you're poor, you're wretched, you're naked. Okay? So here, in this Sermon on the Mount, like I said, this is the, this is the principal teaching. This is Christianity. If you want to understand what true Christianity is, put aside everything else for momentarily and go read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And see the teaching of Jesus Christ. That is the foundation. That is what our lives are supposed to show forth and express. Amen. Praying for our enemies. Getting rid of hypocrisy. Putting aside the traditions of men. To live in the spirit and word of God. All right. But now, you know, he had gathered his disciples for this. Mm -hmm. And that's when he first named his apostles, right? Yes. But it talks about the crowds that were around. Mm -hmm. See, there were other people who were listening in who were not his disciples. That's right. The crowds. 
I said hearing doesn't mean receiving. Hearing doesn't mean understanding. Mm -hmm. Those people, they were astonished. They were astounded and astonished and amazed. by the authority of Jesus Christ. Yes. If you are not seeing and understanding the authority of Jesus Christ, nothing is impossible with God. He speaks things into existence. Yes. What he has spoken, he watches over to perform. Not one promise, not one good promise that he has promised has failed to come to pass. Right. There is power in his word. And his word to you is this. I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. He loved you enough. God the Father loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ mm -hmm. into the world to go to that cross in your place that he you, would pay the price for your sin. When you understand that, mm. when you understand the love of God, it'll change your life and it'll change the world around you. I said before, the Apostle Paul, I don't believe that there was a man who lived, a normal man who lived, mm -hmm. that understood the law as well as the Apostle as Saul of Tarsus. And then as Paul, the Apostle Paul, I don't believe there was a man who understood the love of God as much. Yes. Go read that last part of the 8th chapter of Romans, mm -hmm. where Paul said he was persuaded mm -hmm. that nothing could separate him from the love of God. Yeah. And that was the power that he went forth in and literally turned the world upside down. That one Jewish man mm -hmm. turned the Roman Empire upside, upside down mm -hmm. because he went forth in the power of knowing God's love. God's love changed me. God's love changed Alice. Absolutely. I pray that God's love has changed you. If it hasn't yet, please take time, time to go before God and say, show me your love for me. Explain your love to me. Give me understanding of your love for me. It will change your life. Remember what I said before? When it was came to speaking the parables. Mm -hmm. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. but to them it has not been granted. Matthew 13, 10 and 11. The question I want to ask you today is, Are you a disciple or part of the crowd? Mm -hmm. Church buildings are filled with crowds today. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many churches that literally... It's like these mega churches with thousands of people. They're filled with crowds. But are they filled with disciples? Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Father, I pray that we would feast on your word. That we would see it as our necessary food. That we would abide, we would dwell in your word. That we would know the truth in these days of raging lies, Lord God. Lord, that we might serve you, that we'd be free to serve you as we should, that we would bring the power of your word, the power of your love out into a dark and dying world. Lord, but before it changes anybody else out there, Lord, let that word change us. Lord, let it bring us to the fullness of your plan in our lives. And we just thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Well, don't forget to be back next time when we continue on in Jesus' name.